Welcome back. Today we're going to be making a unboxing and review of the Creality Halot Mage 8K. Uh, this is the known pro version. There is a pro version as well, which is supposed to be a bit quicker. Uh, this is a medium size resin printer, uh, mono screen, and the sizes are here in the side of the box. So 42 by 35 by 67.5 centimeters. Of course, this is the external dimensions of the machine itself. Uh, the build volume is rated at 128 by 228 by 230 millimeters. This is a 10.3 uh, inches uh, screen with a 30 micron-ish uh, resolution on the screen, 8K. And to open the box, it's very uh, nice uh, system here. So you just need to pop this out. There's a kind of protection label for it, for the, the shipping. You pull this tab out on both sides. And then all you need to do is to uh, lift the box. So the printer should be standing uh, underneath in foam and protecting everything. So very, very handy, very nice shipping uh, packaging. Once you remove the external packaging, this is what come out with. Uh, and the first thing I've noticed is that the feet are not uh, adjustable. So this could be a bit inconvenient sometimes. Uh, if you open the lid, which is uh, integrated to the printer, very nice design as well. I think that is one in this category with this one. You have an additional FEP sheet. Thanks for that, Creality. Um, it does feel quite uh, nice to move. Uh, I think it's going to be very convenient as well. So you don't need to find a uh, dedicated space to put the, the lid on and off. Uh, but of course, you need to have a little bit of headroom on top. Uh, you remove the first uh, layer of foam, you have the pack full of the usual tools and goodies and instructions and stuff. I'll go through the detail uh, later on the video. You have this tube, which is supposed to be linked to the extraction system and vented to an area of your convenience and also the, the power lead. Uh, it's quite nice to see that there is no separation on the power supply. It's integrated in the printer, so all you need to do is to plug that in the back. If you remove the main piece of foam in the middle, you will be able to see the carbon filter, which is integrated to the, the, the machine as well. So this is another pro for the this model and, and the build plate. Uh, which seems to be stuck here. I'll probably need to lift the build plate if I want to remove that. So yeah, let's power up the, the machine and we get this thing uh, completely disassembled, ready to start. Powering up is very simple. Just plug the cord that came with the machine and turn the bottom and the back of the machine. And you soon realize the fans kick in straight away the screen powers up and there's this constant uh, humming noise of the fans, which I don't think you can turn it off. So going through the menu, this is my first time, go manual. And yeah, that should be the way of lifting the build plate and it's working. So yeah, I've set up to 10 millimeters, which should be more than enough to clear the uh, build plate for me to remove it and show the rest of the printer. Right, so after pulling the build plate off, you can see here from the underneath the texture. It's a very nice texture, which is supposed to be good for the adhesion of your prints. And the leveling system, which is uh, the one of my preference, the, the four bolt uh, leveling system. Uh, so that should be pretty straightforward to level. I'll show that in a second. And the last piece of foam is just protecting the FEP sheet on the vat. And once again, it's secured by two bolts, one in each side. And uh, it seems to be attached to the, the vat. Let me unscrew this completely and take it off for your appreciation. Yeah, so you need to take that completely. And as you can see, two holes. So it might be a little bit fiddly to make sure it aligns but shouldn't go anywhere once it's uh, locked in underneath the vat you have already a uh, protector a screen protector film 
you can see here with a bit of a black tape I don't know exactly what type of tape this is so that should be also convenient if you get some spillage or something that gets uh, in between the vat and the screen you should be able to replace this without having to replace the whole screen uh, in the back you have two linear rails and the usual Z rod so yeah also looks very well constructed and I noticed comparing my printer to others uh, online that uh, it seems to be missing uh, some parts here at the top so you see the Z switch uh, but you also should have like a plate to limit the, the Z rod so I'm gonna be contacting Creality and see if I can get my hands on these uh, spare parts uh, carbon filter as I mentioned should be taking the odors of the printer of the enclosure you just plug the pipe in the back and route it to your convenience and going quickly through the contents uh, you have filters you have allen wrenches you have two scrapers one metal one plastic one a bit of grease uh, a license a temporary license for G2 box and also of course the, the memory stick and the instruction booklets so the only real thing you need to do before start printing is leveling the bed. I'm going to be using the flint read method which doesn't require any additional uh, tools or anything that isn't included in the printer. You don't need the paper, it's just using the, the FEP sheet. So make sure the uh, build plate is secured with the, the big black knob and then unscrew the four leveling screws. Make sure everything is loose. You should now install your uh, VAT uh, with this design there is really no way to get it wrong just make sure everything has been pushed towards the back of the uh, the machine and then tighten the knobs in the left and the right hand side uh, once they're tight enough you don't need to go mental on them uh, the, the VAT shouldn't move and go anywhere you should then power up your machine if you're not and go to the the manual menu so test, manual, home button and this whole process now takes about two minutes to go through uh, all the way up to the um, switch, the end switch, the Z uh, axis uh, and all the way back down. I think this is a little bit uh, of inconvenient design because every time you need to start it needs to go all the way up and down but I at the same time it kind of helps you uh, making sure your your printer is moving freely all the way up before you really start printing it and wasting resin and stuff like that so as I mentioned uh, my printer seems to be missing a uh, plate at the end of the travel there exactly where you're seeing the, the knob right now so I'm going to be contacting uh, Reality to see if I can get a uh, spare part so yeah once it goes up I think it just uh, learns the uh, end stop and then travels all the way down to where the zero position should be so the whole process takes about two minutes I sped that up a little bit for the video uh, but yeah as you can also notice the printer isn't like the quietest uh, in the range but I think it's not too bad if you're printing it in a closure or a box it shouldn't be a problem so once the printer reaches zero position it will then be and then you make sure the plate is being pushed towards the FEP and then you tighten up the bolts as I said, this uh, flint read uh, method doesn't require the additional um, paper. It basically uses the, the FEP as the paper. So that's quite convenient if you don't have the right dimensions or the right thickness or, or you lost or it's, for some reason you, you don't have any, anything else than the printer with you. Um, bit of a risk on this method is that if you have any uh, debris or any, you know, failed print on the on, on the FEP or any kind of big particles of dust or whatever you might be wearing out your FEP there's also one thing that I like to test on my new prints which is the the screen so I go to the exposure test and hit next it doesn't need to be like 20 15 seconds just a quick one to sanity check 
So no dead pixels, the screen looks to be fine, which is always a good sign. Right, so we hit back. Let's go through the menu. You have here as well uh, air filter, automatic or manual. I'll leave it to automatic. You have stop, which directly stops everything and clean. So this is meant to be using a full exposure in, in the, the full screen. I'll use that at the end of the print. Uh, I'll show you how it works, but you can also use that as your screen test. So what it does, I'll put here for 10 seconds just to show you what it does. It, pretty much lights up the full screen so you should be able to spot any dead uh, pixels or anything like that so once again my screen seems to be uh, flawless so yeah good for reality and finally let's get to printing so yeah, once again you power up the machine in the back you have the USB slot in the front as you can see here I've already is sliced a uh, piece that I am working on in the main menu you just hit print here in the right hand side and you should have your files. So the, the format for this printer is a bit weird. CXDL, I think PV4 is the version. Uh, and as you can see, there are also a few other uh, files in the printer, which you just need to ignore. Uh, I'm going to be using this nylon um, resin from Sunglu. I'll leave the link in the description. I'm using nylon because I'm, I'm working on a, a little project that I'll be sharing with you later. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's my first time printing this resin and yeah, so I thought it would be a nice uh, Review to see if the printer would be capable of handling it. So just pour the resin as you usually do I like to pour that on top of the build plate just to make sure everything's smooth and I don't have any clumps or anything like that uh, Resin is quite liquid as you can see here. It's very it's not very thick I've warmed up a little bit because it's a little bit in UK, but nevertheless, it seems to be a very nice and thin uh, resin to pour. And once you're happy with the amount of resin you have, you just need to hit the print. You should be able to see a reveal and press play. And off it goes. It's probably going to do the whole homing process now, going all the way up to the Z switch and coming back to start the print. So I'm going to leave it sit there for a couple of minutes and come back once it starts to check on it. So after a couple of minutes, it will start from the first layer. As you can see here, a little preview of the first layer, which is going to be your burning layers or your longer exposure layers. Uh, yeah, just make sure your printer is doing what it should be doing, lifting, tracting, and all you need to do now is wait for the print to finish. It's giving me about 12 hours, 16 hours now, uh, so I'm going to check the slicer settings. It is a little bit cold here in UK today, so I'm going to leave my portable heater there in the back on the left hand side. You can see there that little device. Uh, it's a, a, a cheap one. I'll, I'll leave a link to the video here. Can see it's blowing a little bit of hot air here through the vent so hopefully it will help with the printing process it is the next morning and as you can see the printer is still going on uh, i think it's taking a bit longer than what i was expecting uh, it's probably on my uh, slicer uh, settings i'm using lychee with 2.2 seconds exposure time for normal layers I'll leave all my settings in the description of the video if you're interested but I think this is related to motion not really exposure time and finally the printer is finished uh, it's gonna be now taking all the full travel to the end of the print volume and we can get into the messy part now cleaning and washing and curing once again this lid is very inconvenient you just need to pull it out and you have your prints reviewed you don't need to find a place to store it or anything else just need to make sure you have enough headroom to lift so now i'm going to show you the the clean um, process here so you go to menu clean 15 seconds is what i'm going to use just hit next and that is exposing the whole build plate now so that should create a nice and thick film for you to pull out and clean your your vet instantly it's very nice very handy i'll show you that in a second so once it's done it doesn't do anything fancy 
all you need to do now is remove the vat go back exposure is over remove the vat and just spill that little fume of cured resin and then you can start all over again very very nice and convenient and here is the final result is already washed and cured slightly uh, this resin is very good very nice and flexible I definitely gonna be using that and as I said I'm working on a project I'll be sharing with you uh, uh, in the future but look at the details this model by the way is the Wolverine bust from Wicked 3D I'll leave their link into the description as well if you're interested but overall I'm very happy with this printer and to complete this review I'm gonna leave it here three things that I like and three things that I don't like about this printer Starting with the annoying things, uh, first of all is the noise, I think that the printer is a little bit noisier than uh, the other on the same range. Second one, the, the vat is a little bit shallow, so it is a little bit fin flimsy if you're trying to um, pour that back into the bottles. And third one, it's general construction uh, design choices. Like for example, I mentioned before, the lack of adjustment on the feet or even the lack of handles to be able to move your printer a little bit easier. On the other side, the good things is the lid. I think that's a uh, common sense uh, amongst everybody that has this printer. It is very convenient, the fact that you just flip a lid over and you have access to your prints. It helps a lot if you have tight spaces. The second thing that I like the most is probably the reason why I bought this printer, which is the bang for buck. Uh, for the resolution and the print volume that you have, uh, I think there is no other printer currently in the market that is cheaper than that. So for me, that was the key factor for buying this one. And last but not least is the simplicity to get uh, high quality prints straight out of the box. So. Um, you've seen by my video, I only took a couple of steps leveling and pouring resin in basically to get the, the prints that you, you've seen. So uh, if you are beginning and you're starting with resin, I would definitely recommend this one. It's pretty straightforward. You don't have a lot of, of faff and that is sometimes a very good quality. You don't need to worry about too much. Thank you for watching and see you next time.